Hey everyone, welcome to another How to Webflow. In this video tutorial, I'll be answering Josh's question. Josh wrote on Twitter saying, wasn't sure if you made a video on it or knew of a tutorial, but I'm trying to replicate the text masking inside of containers effect like on mono-1.com. So what he's talking about looks like this. Now, when I first saw this tweet, I was like, all right, cool. This seems pretty simple. And whenever I uh, think about uh, an effect or before I start working inside of Webflow, I like to imagine myself building it. And I was walking my dog and I was like, yeah, this is pretty easy. You just do some fixed layers, some position relative, overflow hidden, which creates the masking effect and you're done. But when I started to work on it, I was like, oh wait, it's not easy wait, what am I missing? And I tried and tried and tried again. And then after 30 minutes of trying, I was like, okay, let me take a step back and take a breather. And I started web surfing just to get my mind off of it and then went back on it and I still couldn't get it done. So probably at the 50 minute mark or something, I said, okay, fine. I'm going to inspect element. I'm going to look at their code and look at their CSS and dev tools and see what they did. And then I realized, whoa, they used a CSS snippet called CSS Clip. And I've never used that before. And after using it, I was like, oh, so there it is. All right, so I'm going to show you how to create this effect right now. Here we go. Here we go. First thing you do, drag in a row. Let's drag in a section and we're going to call it row, a height of 100 VH. And we're going to give this overflow of hidden because that's part of the masking. What part? I know, weird. Follow me on this. Next is position relative. And let's give this a background color. We're going to give this any old background color. That's good right there. All right, next, inside of here, drag in a div block, and we're gonna call this text holder. You can call it whatever you want. This one is gonna be positioned um, uh, absolute, full, and this is relative to row. That's why row needs to be relative, all right? So there's that, and that one is, I think it's done. Yeah, yeah, that one's done. Next, we're gonna bring in a heading, and this heading right here, we're gonna call it the text. You can you can call it whatever you want, but let's remove the margin top and margin bottom. And you don't usually do this with H1s, but like, here, follow me. Flex, center, center, position, fixed, full. Okay? So now let's go ahead and change this to hello world. And we're gonna copy and copy the row, paste it into body, and now we have two rows. But we can't really tell. So let's go to the second row, give it a combo class of number two, and give it a different color, something like that, cool. And so now we have two of them, all right? So now let's change this text. I'm gonna double click that text. But you think we're on the first row, the yellow one, but we're actually on the second one. I know, kind of weird. Follow me on this. Now watch this, something else. So they're overlapping right now. And it looks like we're halfway there, you know, when you do it like this, but that's half of the trick, all right? So where is the other half? And I was racking my brain and I was like, come on, it has to be simple. Where is it, where is it? So I went to inspect element and I was going through each line and I found it right here. That guy right there. And I was like, wait, okay, what teach this internet, teach me CSS clip. What is this? And so I started playing around with it and I was like, oh, it's a different kind of masking. But how does it work inside of inside of this? And so I tried it, and what you do is you drag in an embed to the very top. You write in some code for CSS, which is style. You're gonna paste in that tricky, tricky clip, and we're gonna target the text holder. Save and close. And there you go. 
Ugh. All right. So now I can just take row two, paste it into body, go here, duplicate and call it row three, give it a different color, and then go here to the text and press return. And so I'm changing the text and then I press escape. So this is the hard part about editing this is you have to imagine what you're typing and um, you can't double click it because if I double click, now I'm on slide, um, row one. If I go here, press return, I'm ch I can change stuff and then press escape and then I've changed it. But yeah. So go here, press return. Yeah. Testing, press escape. So it'll be kind of hard to edit, but I mean, it's working. All right. Pretty cool effect, huh? So thanks again to Josh for submitting that uh, tweet and challenging me. It was pretty fun to do. I really like this effect and I'm really thinking about redesigning my portfolio site for the second time this year to use this effect. I kind of want to go bigger with my font and everything, all my type size and whatnot on my site. Yeah, I want to I want to do this. So thanks again, Josh. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Or if you have a general comment about this video, leave that as well. If you want to support me, go ahead and click on the support. <laughs> click on the subscribe button, the like and the notification bell. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at the pixel geek. That's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.